Hello, everybody, and welcome to our continuing conversation around why Black Lives Matter. Um, I think we are now on part 53, but we have actually reached a point where the conversation has actually been going for just on a for just slightly over a year. Um, so yeah, and uh, one of the things we haven't really delved into very much is how racism shows up in sport and what that means to athletes when they are valued for their athletic ability, but not necessarily for themselves as a person, um, which could show up in how our bans are applied for doping and all those kind of things or how for instance athletes are seen to be less than when they don't produce winning results um, specifically around athletes of color and black athletes so yeah um, very high level introduction and I'd like to open it up to the team who may have additional insights into our conversation today and we will explore whatever healing comes up in those spaces in the in the conversation around exploring racism in sport. So I'm going to open it up to the team and invite comments. I'm also inviting um, the people that are watching to share their insights and comments. And we will respond to anything that you like to bring up or share with us. Also just have a sense of where you are experiencing it or what insights you might have. So please feel free to join us and share your thoughts and insights as well. So, I'm oh, sorry, Fiona. So, <laughs> one of the things that we mentioned um, while uh, discussing this topic is um, the suspension of Shikari, the charter, is that how you pronounce her name, um, who's in, is a sprinter. And I felt like a lot of um, people were outraged about the decision to suspend her uh, because she smoked weed after a competition. And they were feeling like a lot of injustice around this decision, especially because like a lot of male white athletes in the US um, have been known to use drugs. Um, like my feeling about it is that they, I think they didn't get caught when they were like um, on the way to the Olympics. So it's a little bit different, but I know and I've seen and felt how um, the black communities feel um, the rise of racism um, around sports and around black athletes. And so yeah, I wanted to ask um, anyone that is in the US here, uh, how, to, how does that make them feel? Yeah, I think um, for me, what came up is like um, black athletes receive like harsher punishments um than their white counterparts or you know they're more likely to well, I don't know the 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 issue with Shikari Richardson was kind of um I don't I don't really know how I feel about it because on one side of it she did um you know test positive for drugs when there was a great an agreement that you know, she wouldn't do drugs. And so, you know, there's a consequence to, to your action there. But um, I think where the outrage came from was like her white counterparts who may have done the same thing um, in the past, not receiving the same punishment or it being easier for them to get away with it. Um, and then what also came up for me is 
like this feeling of um it was just like dang like um trying to avoid falling into a trap of a stereotype and it's like people of color always have to walk on eggshells to not be a stereotype instead of just being themselves while um non-people of color don't have to worry about that um and it just seems like it's easier in a sense. Um, I don't know, my thoughts and feelings are kind of all over the place with it. Um, but yeah, I think that's generally um, how I feel about it. So I guess you want to ask you, like, um, is that it, is that specific to sport, or do you feel like it's a, a more pervasive energy? Yeah, it's definitely more pervasive, um, and not just specific to sports. Um, yeah, just this feeling of having to walk on eggshells um, and not like just people of color are more likely to be punished for their actions and receive a harsher punishment um, because of this narrative that people of color, black people in particular, are inherently bad or wrong. And we have to prove the opposite instead of, um, you know, just not having to have to prove that. Mm. Yeah, so like, and when 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 that when that narrative kind of plays out, or you think about it, what feeling does it bring up for you? Um. Yeah, when I think of when I feel into this narrative that. Um, Black people aren't inherently wrong and inherently bad um, and should be punished. It, the feeling is anger um, and annoyance, but deeper than that, there's a lot of sadness. Mm. And can you see this, this part of yourself that is actually deeply saddened by this script, by this narrative, the story, even just the unfairness of it all. Yeah. And what does she need to feel loved right now? Yeah, she needs a hug. Mm. Yeah, you go ahead and give her that hug. Yeah, and just reassurance that she's loved, um, that she's seen and valued, mm -hmm. and that she is good. Exactly. Just let her know that she is inherently good. She is inherently a divine child of God. And that it's okay to embrace her divinity. Yeah. And as she embraces her divinity, is it possible for a perfect creator to create something bad? No. Absolutely not. And so the narrative feels an illusion and insanity on a level. And so it's very it's really okay to let go of that insanity. Yeah. And if yeah. you could, and if you could 
just use the power of your choice right now. What choice would you make in your reality that allows even just a slight resistance, even just a new narrative to start forming? What choice would you make? Yeah. I choose to see myself as good, see myself as love. Um, I choose peace and I choose to yeah let go of the insanity and allow God um, to take care of it I just give it all to God Amen. Amen. and it's, it's, it's okay to release all of that to God you don't have to carry burdens that were never yours to carry even if you may have been surrounded by a narrative that sounded like it could be your story. Because your story is of perfect love. And your story is of perfect acceptance. And your story is of divinity as a child of God. And so we can allow that story to become your reality. You just need to give the permission for your reality to shift. Mm -hmm. How does that feel? Yeah, I choose to give myself permission to change here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay. and you can allow, you can choose to allow in evidence that things are improving and that fairness is returning in that space. Right. And as you do that, how do you feel? <sighs> yeah, that feels a lot better. Um, mm. Feels more relaxing. Amen. I mean, it definitely feels more relaxing, more comforting. Yeah. And that's the comfort that's at your core. You didn't have to do cartwheels backwards in high heels to find your peace. You were there all along. Yeah. How does that feel? Yeah, that feels really good. It feels a lot better. Mm. Is it feeling complete to you? It does. Mm. So let's, let's allow that to just settle in. Let's allow those new choices to just take hold. Let's allow it to become our way of life. And it's okay if it takes a little bit longer to really appear. Doesn't mean that it's not going to. Mm -hmm. So it's very peaceful to just integrate all of the healing and just be with it. No expectation to go to the next level. There's only, there's only the integration piece allowing it to shift. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How are you feeling now? Well, it feels like um, it feels like I don't have anything to worry about. Um, like it feels, which is exactly your truth. The worry is God's, if there is a worry. Mm -hmm. You can partner with God to shift what you need to shift. You don't need to take on everything. That's not your job. Right. Mm. Yeah.
Yeah, that feels good. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you. I did want to touch on something um, because she made a comment about like feeling like we get like a deeper punishment than everyone else. And I just wanted to change like the language there because this is really important and Jeff touches on this a lot. Um, they're not being punished, they are being disciplined because there was a rule that was broken during this time. And I wanted to um, shine some clarity on the difference between Shikari and Michael Phelps because that's really the biggest thing that is coming up as like a black female and a white male and the difference that happened with Shikari, she tested positive during a time where they were tested, where they were having to be tested. And so she tested positive during that time. When Michael Phelps um, was tested for the Olympics, he, was, he did not test positive. However, a picture of him showed up three months after the Olympics of him smoking at a party. And um, so that's why he was not uh, disqualified from the Olympics because the Olympics had already happened. However, he was suspended for three months from the USA uh, swim. Um, they also uh, pulled finances from him. He also lost a lot of sponsorships, including Kellogg. And so he did get a lot of discipline and a lot of things uh, happen and and effect of him smoking or having a picture of him smoking. However, he never tested positive for weed during the Olympic trials, during the time of the Olympics. So that's why there's a difference here. Um, Shikari only got suspended for 30 days. It does take her out of the 100 meter. However, it does not take her out of the Olympics completely. And so I just wanted to shine that um, there was just a difference in between the way that it was uh, used. It's also allowed to be used if it was um, cleared by a doctor and it's prescribed from a doctor to that athlete. They do have uh, restrictions in that area for that. So um, yeah, I, I understand where she was coming from and uh, it's just too bad the girl didn't have the mirror exercise because she would have been able to work right through that without having to go to the weed. Um, but I completely have compassion for her and the way that she chose to cope with the situation that she was dealing with, which was a reporter told her that her mom had passed, her biological mother had passed. One, that is not a compassionate way to learn that your biological mother had passed. So I, I understand um, a lot of probably what she was going through there, but I did want to clear up the difference between uh, the, the repercussion of Phelps doing it and Shikari doing it. It was really just the timing of it and the fact that her test fell during a time that she did smoke and it is illegal or it is um, against the rules of what they have for the Olympics at that time. Yeah, thank you for shedding light on this. Um, yeah, it's really helpful. Um, and I really do have compassion for her. But I also feel that the discussion there, um, it's like it, it, it woke up, um, it uncovered like feelings from people of this injustice. And yeah, now that I, when I think about black injustice uh, towards black athletes, um, in professional sports, I think about Naomi, Osaka, Serena, Serena Williams, and you know all the football players in the world that are always French for you when they win and African when they don't, or things like that. And I feel like it was a good way for God to to make us aware um, that there was an issue there. And I do feel that it's in all parts of society, like uh, as Diana said, um, walking on eggshells to not leave out the stereotypes that people want to, to stick on them. But like, as this is in the media coverage, we definitely see more of this and we definitely see Feel the injustice that these athletes have, have felt. So, 
Yeah. I don't know. What do you guys think about it? I feel like that you have something. I, I honestly don't. I, I agree with everything that Kamisha says because I believe that there was a miscommunication for what happened with uh, Shikari. Everyone was, everyone was just so quick to jump on in the situation, but really she just didn't cover her tracks. <laughs> and that's the best way to, best word to use. She didn't cover her tracks. She tested positive and she signed a contract. It's that's it's business. That's that's how it is. I, I mean, sorry. I think what I'm having a trouble with a little bit is like um, getting clear on where there is um, like an injust. I don't know. I guess because for me, like in the Olympics. The black athletes are the ones who run the show. <laughs> they, you got some, oh, you got Biles, you got um, Bolt. I can't remember their first names; are really bad. But like a lot of the top medalists are black people. That's kind of what society expects from black people. Is like they're just going to take it because they're athletic. They have like they're just amazing when it comes to our athleticism. And so I'm trying to get the clarity of where the injustice is. I guess that's where I, where I'm trying to work and understand. Um, because it's really like this is where a lot of our black athletes shine this is where they're seen this is where they make a name for themselves and so um yeah I just uh I'm trying to get clear where the injustice is I mean I guess we can bring Colin in on this okay Colin is kind of a situation you know the whole kneeling movement in 2016 that lost him you know his contract however you know i mean yeah it wasn't injustice what happened to him however uh i do know that there was starting to be a decline in the viewership and then other black athletes started following along with what colin did so i guess yeah, so similar to you i, I can't find the injustice either because like he, he started some shit he started the he, he started the movement when he needed. He did. So uh, that's a tough that's a toughie. Yeah, and that goes back to uh, the like black people being shot. That was m one of the main reasons why he was kneeling, um, and a lot of people turned it and figured that it was against like our military. He was disrespecting our military. Yeah, um, and then they started, and then they pulled some fake shit trying to be. Uh, like the NFL very is very fickle. I think we all know that. <laughs> they can be very fickle. So I think I think you guys have touched on a, an important an important point of distinction that people tend to hop on to topical things for sensation and followership and literally to stir the pot and they they are there are components where yes there is injustice like for instance when athletes are not treated well athletes of color are not treated well because they were almost the favorites to win a cup or bring something home or just lead a team and they fail so there's that one mm. piece but then there's the other piece of, well, actually, they failed in their obligation. They have an obligation to show up when they are those people at the forefront. And they failed in their obligation. And it's okay for them to be disciplined for having failed in their obligation. But it's also not appropriate for them to be disciplined because... They failed because of the color of their skin kind of thing. So nobody's going to dehumanize somebody else potentially for failing to win at something that they were the favorite to win at. 
And yet it sometimes happens with athletes of color. And I've, I've seen it as well in South Africa. So for instance, what you guys would call football, we call rugby. Um, and so rugby has been a sport that has had to be integrated and not integrated. And some of the black athletes are, as you said, Kanisha, super fast, super sporty, and those kind of things. And so when they play games in teams that are winning, they are heroes. When, they, when their teams are not winning, then it's, well, what was this person's part? It also can't take one, one person can't carry a team. It's not appropriate. It's not compassionate. It's not healthy. So there is, there's always going to be that happy balance. But I, I agree with you completely that to sensationalize things like this is to stir the pot, is to create a fire from, a, from technically a little spark. And it is up to us to be discerning where there's an energy that requires healing versus an energy that's being fueled by sensationalism. And yes, it might bring up feelings and that's okay. It's appropriate for it to bring up feelings. It's okay for those feelings to be worked through and healed, but we also need to be sensible that sometimes it's just downright bad behavior and it's also okay to call that yeah so what i feel with richardson is that in all of the mix there was also this victim mentality that came up maybe as an, ex an excuse to cover that yeah, she, she was at fault there, and regardless of the circumstances, she's going to have to face um, the discipline. And so I think it complexified the situation even more because like, we really have to be aware of um, each story and how it plays out and what's our role in there, like um, how we really like raising awareness around an injustice or are we just upset about something? And so I, I definitely feel that in this case, there were, there were a lot of upsets and maybe people were fed up <laughs> um, because it happened, um, injustices happened several times this year. And so, yeah, maybe her in that participating in the Olympics was like too much uh, for people who and they need to have healing there. I think maybe it. I think maybe people people are upset about this because there was no compassion towards the situation when really this was, it was nothing personal, it was just business. So, I mean, hey. Yeah, and I believe, because we all know that everyone creates in their own reality. Um, and so the card that we have is Surrender Drama. Um, it says, no matter how emotionally charged the situation is, remain calm and don't contribute to the drama, stay centered, will help resolve the issue more quickly. And one of the things that I realized about Shikari um is that she's very um like clear in who she is and uh like comes out though authentically the way that she desires and so she has orange hair though she has like regular furry hair underneath she has long nails her eyelashes are like very like out there so she really um has a lot of people comment at her about the way that she looks and so there's a little bit of drama there there's a little bit of drama being manifested in her reality about the way that she looks and the way that she shows up. And so it, it doesn't really surprise me that she manifested a little bit of drama in this area to be, so she's working through an upset is what I'm saying. She's working through people coming at her because that's kind of what she's um, uh, working through a little bit, I think is like a worthiness block of feeling like she is worthy of being here. She doesn't have to 
be anything that she's not. She just shows up, but there's a little bit of a worthiness block there. And that's why it's manifesting in her reality the way that it is. Um, and so we can really do have complete compassion for her and the choices that she's making. Um, she has taken full responsibility of this choice and um, also has, I think that her saying was, I am human, which is very clear. She is human and she's learning. Um, and like I said, uh, hopefully she can call in learning the mirror exercise so that she can work through episodes like this um, instead of having to be the poster child of what you cannot do in the Olympics. <laughs> um, because someone has to, like one person has to always go through it for the, everyone else to learn. There's always gonna be that one person who's paved the way. And you know what, Shikari took it on. So <laughs> that's just how I personally see it. Um, but that's not gonna stop her. She's going to be able to compete in Tokyo. Um, she just, like I said, has to, work through the discipline and we'll go from there. So there was something else that actually that I read about was that the Tokyo, and I don't know what committee it is in Tokyo in the in terms of the Olympics, but also just allowing not allowing swim caps that are appropriate for women of color that for instance, have the Afro and those kind of things. And so those swim caps that they were petitioning to have signed off were disallowed, which then impacts on them on their ability to compete because the fro and the hair and everything else. So I like that. Like, that's something that I, I actually read about a couple of days ago. And I just kind of thought it would also be useful to just feel into that space and what that actually signifies in terms of possibly the ability to compete as naturally as possible. Yeah, and that does bring up some unfairness to me because unless they can like, I, like what I guess I didn't realize that there was a difference for swim caps for those who have more hair than other people <laughs> uh, like trying to like grasp the difference um yeah so so the thing is that there wasn't a difference and the okay. challenge is that swimmers of color believe that there should be that little bit of allowance and let's be honest if you've ever swum that the swim cap don't stay if you if you have <laughs> you know you might have more hair you might have an oddly shaped head it doesn't really matter what it is the swim cap goes so is it is it speaking to uh, an energy that's almost exclusive or is it speaking to an energy of not necessarily understanding the challenge behind what the request yeah, is understanding the challenge behind because i think the whole yeah, thing understanding. is they're trying to make it so equal they're not trying to give anyone an advantage but sadly the hair is in a sense is a disadvantage to the cap i mean i personally try to wear some cap and you're right it does not stay on it like rolls off and does this thing um but yeah that's quite interesting that that i think that's really what it is is they're just trying to make it like a baseline of equalness for everyone and it just isn't working for the pro <laughs> yeah it's working for the pro and I, you know and i think that it's it's important to actually just feel into that energy because again when it comes to things like sport you do want to take away as many unnatural advantages as possible to even the playing field because then you can comfortably say they competed on even footing. But then something like that also may just be the place of there's not enough of an equal footing because of the fact that, let's be honest, ethnic hair is going to go bigger in, in pool water, not smaller. <laughs> Uh, 
How does the rest of the team feel about it? What comes up for you when you feel into it? It's interesting because like, I remember past Olympics and how the, um, the equipment for the swim teams evolved. And there was some kind, there was some kind of discussion around that, like, is it cheating? Is it fair? Um, it's like, oh, now their swimsuits are more um, fit to aerodynamics and they are able to go faster and things like that. And then the discussion died down pretty quickly. Um, it feels like when you brought this up, it felt like there, were a bit, there was a bit of struggle because, um, and this happens in tennis too, it feels like when it's brought up by people of color and their, um, I mean, particularity in terms of like, um, physics and health, it's making like a little bit more noise, a little bit more drama. And it doesn't mean that the discussion cannot be had and that there are not like sensible people who will take a good decision for everyone, but it's like there's a little bit of, you know, resistance, like mm. people are more shocked about it. Um, yeah, that's just something that came up. Um, for me when you said it. Mm. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I actually. You muted. Yeah, I actually feel like it is a little bit of an energy of resistance, but again, uh, you know, I, I think there's almost, there's a very fine line because of that equal, almost, and, and, and unfortunately in sport, it is a level of that equal playing field. That is, the, that is the one place where any type of enhancement provides advantages that other people may or may not have. So, yeah, um, I just, and also one, I have to wonder, like, you know, if you have a bigger swim cap, doesn't it inadvertently impact you anyway? Because it's more resistance in the water kind of thing. Honestly, yeah. Like... Those are true questions, and I do ask myself that as well. <laughs> but like in hindsight of what all that we have said here, it seems like um, um, there's a place for a sports federation and committees to um, evolve and grow and you know incorporate um, compassion and communication with um, with the athletes as to having, um, you know, an environment that is like uh, loving and easier for everyone because it does feel like there is like a shark environment and sometimes athletes do have to struggle and sometimes they have the support of their team and sometimes not. And so, yeah, I feel like we've, um, more of these discussions coming up, there's going to be more um, change in these federations and the Olympic Committee as well, and more adapting and really searching for the true fairness and even going to like testing and physics to, to know if, hey, if, a, if another swimming cap <laughs> Can be better for some of the some of the competing um, people. Yeah, because you know, like I, I think it's 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 the dynamics. You know, dynamics of competition, dynamics of what is required in certain sports, and again, it speaks to what you were talking about in terms of swimsuits that are more aerodynamic and tennis rackets that are so much lighter and so much more easily used and therefore more expensive and who has access to them and all those kind of things and it, and it really does speak to accessibility and an energy of greater partnership in those spaces yeah and like it, each sport has its its history so I think it's only um, 
I think it's evident that some upsets are now coming up about the change in the sports and also the demographics in these sports are changing mm -hmm. as well. So obviously, yeah, I, I, th I just think we're, uh, there's going to be an adaptation and yeah. we're going to have a revision of what, what we see as fair in sports. Mm. Yeah, I feel I, I feel an energy of adaptability, definitely. Yeah, like as you say that too, the one that comes up for me is uh, is that Al Alison Felix or Flat Felix? She was um, a U.S. Olympic and she was signed by Nike, and then once Nike found out that she was pregnant, they dropped her, and um, it was because they felt that she couldn't meet the needs of like her being an athlete um though that didn't really stop her because she competed like not too long after giving birth to her child <laughs> um but I found that quite interesting that sponsors um would like drop an athlete because she's choosing to grow her family and continue to like follow her passion and do what she loves um but just because she may not meet the expectation um of like her her top performance they are willing to drop her just because she's having a child that that there's an injustice there that felt wrong to me now that I'm feeling it too like athletes and uh an expectation for them I mean if it was I don't think it was anything in her contract like hey you can't get pregnant during this time <laughs> but um it was very clear that because she didn't show up in an expectation they desired her to they chose to drop her and now she's fighting for like uh for that to change especially for female athletes who want to have a child because if it was a male athlete it wouldn't be the same because it's his wife who's having the baby not him Yeah, and like it speaks to um, evolving in a harsh environment, as I said earlier. And honestly, I don't know what's what's her contracts and her requirements, but yeah, maybe we don't know. I, I feel like some athletes do have requirements to to perform for a few years before they. Yeah go ahead and have a family and then their contracts change or end. And it feels like a really complex topic, but like, yeah. How do you feel about? Um, um, it feels like, it's like they're asking them to sacrifice like either you choose to do this or you choose to have a family but i think if an athlete can do both they should be allowed to like it's it's their it's their life and their choice in a sense but like like i said she she continued to she raced very shortly after having her baby that was a personal choice for her to be able to get herself back into like that shape that she needed for um that but i find uh, based off the personal research that I've done with athletes who are are working out and doing their thing at the childbirth and then they have a child actually bounce right back to their original body because that's the, how their body was trained in those eight nine months so I really don't think that it it should affect it at all to be honest with you um, I was just reading an article on another Olympic um, runner who is a runner she's 18 weeks pregnant and no one knew she was pregnant but she felt the need that she had to hide it because of what society thought or what her her um oh god sponsors were saying and so but she showed up and she did her thing <laughs> still 18 weeks pregnant so um i believe the body is resilient and if an athlete can do it they should allow them to do it and i really think that it's more of an inspiration to 
uh, parents who are out there who think that like they have to give up their dreams and their goals and their desires because they're parents. And these athletes are showing, no, you don't. You can continue to do your passion and still grow and have a family. Um, so yeah, I do feel that there is just some unfairness there um, that they should be supported instead of um, instead of taking back your support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, it also feels like as professional athletes, like it's almost like their body or in the contracts as well. And if they take a risk, like the team is not going to invest in them anymore, it kind of feels bad. Like um, it's an objectification of their body, but I think a lot of people reason that way. And I think that's where, that's where the unfairness can play out because um, it sacrifices the human part of, of them doing their life purpose, basically. So yeah, do you, do you have a desire to heal that unfairness? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So how are you feeling right now in your heart? I guess uh, there's just some sadness. I guess there there just has to be like a deep level of clarity when it comes to like these contracts. <laughs> I guess because um, in a sense they're like like signing not signing themselves away, but in a sense they are like they're they're making a deal with these people that um, they will keep their body up to par so that they can perform at their best. Um, yeah. I guess there's just like a, this, this clarity and needing to understand like the expectations that they're holding for these athletes or is this a standard that's in their contract? Because there's a difference mm -hmm. between expectations and standards. And so getting clear on like, um, are they just expecting you to not get pregnant during that time? Or is there a clear standard here that like during this time you're making a choice to only put all of your focus here and not expanding the family at the same time? Because we all know that things happen. <laughs> babies, babies happen. That's a choice. Um, but yeah, I guess there's just like this uh, level of clarity. And if there isn't a standard or like clarity in their contract that like, having a child is probably not a good idea, we shouldn't do this, then I don't think that they should be um, in a sense, uh, now it feels like punishment here. So that feels like a punishment. It doesn't feel like they're being disciplined mm -hmm. for a choice. It feels like they're being punished for making a choice to, to grow their family. <laughs> yeah, so. If you go to the emotion part of it all, um, do you feel like do you feel like you have been sacrificing yourself or giving yourself away? I guess I would see where I've been sacrificing myself, yeah. Hmm. Um, what does that part of you need to feel loved? To claim my power back. Mm. Is, is it safe to claim your power back? Yes. Yeah. Are, you, are you protected by God? Yeah, I'm protected by God. So yeah, is it safe to, to live fully and powerfully without fear? Yeah. Mm. 
what else are you doing here? I guess like what's coming up is like sometimes I see like individual athletes like going through something and it feels like injustice but at this when I like feel into it it feels like like in a sense like they were the chosen individual to for this to go through so that a change could happen a change could occur afterwards um like for instance like Jeff and Shalia they're the ones who brought this work here even though that wasn't like what they wanted to do at first, but that's how God used them. And then it, it makes a massive change. And so we look at these athletes or someone individual where it looks like an injustice, but it's really God working through them so that that change can occur. Yeah, for sure. But like, is there a need for martyrdom? Or is there a need for what? Um, is there a need for sacrifices for martyrs? Hmm. No. No. Because God would have brought the lesson anyway, right? Yeah. So there's no need to go to the extent of injustices and pain to have your lessons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just let that go. Yeah, do you choose to reduce your relationship with pain here? Hmm. Yeah, I choose to reduce my relationship with pain here. What else do you need there? Just compassion and love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, give yourself all that compassion. And forgive yourself completely and know that you don't have to sacrifice anything to have your good. Yeah, and, yeah. and God would never fail to bring these lessons to, to our intention. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Are you feeling complete there? I do. Yeah. So bring yourself home and yeah. Thank you for thank you for this feeling. Thank you. I just want to touch with Drake real quick and see what he is thinking about this whole discussion. Yeah. Well, I think the the sacrifice was like a really a really big leg like, part because I was feeling into that, you know, when we were talking about like the swim caps. And it was like, you know, it's either like like one, like they shave their hair off right but would they like doing that right you know they would normally they'd be like no i love my hair I would like to to have my hair right so it's like well how do you you know swim do what you love have the hair right so the solution would be the swim caps right but i still feel like there was that like well i have to sacrifice in order to have like my good or something i feel like that's kind of what what that theme was too um like shikari when we were talking about her i was just feeling into like you know it's like a, like the a same thing like i like you can't have both right like you can only have a little bit of your good and like maybe manifesting the um like like losing your good i mean like yeah she she chose like to to smoke weed and like go against the rules yeah but like i still feel like there was that um like that energy of just like not having her good or maybe not like seeing herself as divine right like because she was having all this praise like oh my god she's like this really really fast runner like amazing athlete and then yeah like a week later that happened 
So it was like maybe upset with just being in like the spotlight or being seen. I don't know. That's just what was coming up for me. And we were like talking about all of it. So I don't know if you guys feel the same way about that also. So I, I, I kind of happen to agree with you in the sense that there's almost this contrast experience so that people actually appreciate their good. So they choose to make choices to highlight how much better it is to choose your good. And so they experience this contrast to bring them deeper into the core of their choice. Yeah, I was definitely feeling that. It was, it was kind of just like, it, it was helping me because I've been healing through that too. Because it's like, you don't have to choose contrast. You can just have like all of your good. So it's like, what's the core of choosing the contrast? Like what... Mm that belief right um so it was just going deeper in that because the same thing with like like being pregnant right because um like she was choosing her desire to like have a family and then they were just like nope you're done right so it's how like choosing the to have everything that you want instead of just like half of what you want you know yeah, somewhere in there, she was making a belief that she couldn't have everything. I get what you're saying. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, and I also agree with that, that that statement that she didn't know how to handle herself in the spotlight. That that also brought up uh, a little bit more clarity in her situation. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, because she's she's in like the spotlight. She has all these people just like looking at her and maybe, you know, she's having upset, like, oh my gosh. Yeah, exactly. She's isn't she like like 20 years or something, like 21. So she's very young. She's in yeah. the I don't know. Yeah. Hmm? Hmm. Didn't get what you said, did you? I said no, she's in her twenty her twenties, but I don't know her real age. Okay. Yeah, I think like if we're talking about that drama, um, that relationship with struggle, um, like you know, the effects um, are also that it brings attention to a person. Mm -hmm. So if they are addicted to that drama that we were talking about earlier, um, they get something from that. So there is also something to heal there. Mm -hmm. And I also see it as maybe it's a lesson for her because, I mean, it was just 30 days suspension and she still kept her sponsorship with Nike. So maybe this could be, maybe this could be a lesson for her. I don't know. That's just, I'm just putting it in. Let's hope because that girl don't want to be making the same cycle over and over again. Cool. So thank you, guys. Um, we are just about on our hour. So I'm going to say thank you to everybody for the conversation. And thank you to everybody that's been following us. And invite all of you to like and subscribe to our Church of Union YouTube channel, where you will find all our previous conversations. Um, and we look forward to seeing all of you next week. Thank you, everybody.